An example where we will see how simulation could come into play. Um, this is kind of an example from engineering. You could say the most simple example I could come up with. I should say tomorrow, for instance, this is something people are working with. Tomorrow I go to Holland to have a meeting in an in a EU project on risk analysis of uh, allergenics uh, in, in, in foods, some of the rare, like nut allergy, egg allergy, to try to do some risk analysis of uh, foods and how to deal with that on, an Europe, on a European level. To, to, to do risk analysis of within toxicology, microbiology, or in this case, uh, allergens in food, um, people use simulation tools to try to get all oh, this is very complicated systems and we have very sparse information about the important things we need to know about how many people are at risk, uh, what is the uh, proportion of uh, the concentration of the different uh, uh, um, compounds in the different kinds of foods, all these complicated things. We don't know very good, but we can simulate. We can try to speculate on what the distributions are, and then we can simulate and get some information about how to deal with risk of such issues. So that's a, that's a, a place where uh, simulation are playing an important role. Here is a small example that sort of illustrates the idea. We are producing some plates, rectangular plates, we have a length of plates, which is two meters with a standard deviation of 10 centimeters. It's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty noisy thing we are dealing with here. Um, and um, the width of the plates are on average three meters with a standard deviation of 0.2 centimeters, 0.2 meters, sorry. Um, what we are really interested in is neither the length nor the width, but these are the two things that we know something about, the length and the width, how they behave. This is a thought example. Um, what if what we're really interested is in is the area of these plates? So what we are really interested in is, I should say it now already, is a nonlinear function of the two input variables. We have the length and we have the width, and we have a nonlinear combination, which is the product of the two. And already here, a lot of our theory is actually challenged. How should we, in this context, answer different questions on this issue, on the area issue? For instance, maybe the most simple one. When I produce such plates, what is the mean area, really? I'm sure most of us would have a pretty good guess about at least the answer to this one, which would probably be the right guess. But that's also the most easy question to pose here. Um, I didn't give you the rule for this, actually, in the course at this point. You can find it in the book, but uh, I didn't take it up with you. A more complicated question. What is really the noise or the variability, or we could say the standard deviation in the area? of the area, as you say. What is, you could say, what is really the variance of A, right? This is, what is the, what is the mean of A? What is the variance of A? What if I'm interested in a more sort of subtle consequence of the system, a more a subtle feature of the system, like how often, how often do the area does the area differ from the target of six square meters by more than 0.1 square meter? How often does that event happen? How often is the area more far away from the target than 0.1? That could be something, how often is it uh, cost some money? If it's, uh, I have to stay within these limits to, to get this price, so how often do I get uh, out of these limits? That has a consequence for the price I can achieve for the plates that I'm producing. And there could be other odd events. We could maybe would like to know how often does different odd events happen. And, uh, and the, the general question actually that would answer all these, if we could uh, do the math, um, what is the probability distribution of such a random variable A? I mean, how does that dis distribute across the possible values 
when we know the distribution of x and y? Again, that would be a theoretical question that could be solved in this case. It could be solved, again, if you take the probability course, you can solve it. But here, I give you some tools to solve this issue without taking the probability course. So I give you a 10 minutes lecture that can take the place of a five ECTS point course. So now is the time to listen. And again, here is where my colleague Bo shouldn't listen in on my video very carefully. Um, Instead of doing the math and the theory, we let R do the job for us. We do some brute force computing. And, and today, I have the tools that I'm going to share with you today are presented more as R codes, as kind of algorithms or lines in R than by formulas. Because that's the idea of this. We do things by some uh, coding in R. Code is a... Is a, is, is a big word since I, I would say that it's rather simple-minded things we have to do. For instance, we need to set out the number of simulations. Let's do a large number, in this case 10,000. Let's do 10,000 random lengths and 10,000 10, random widths, right? This is the key random uh, generalization, the key simulation part where I generate from the model I have random normals of lengths, lengths and widths. And then I use such a formula in R to produce 10,000 values of the area, right? I actually let the computer artificially produce 10,000 plates and tell me what, are, what is the result of the area of the plates for 10. I can do that without doing it. I, I can have the computer do it for me. This is kind of a, a list, x and y are sort of lists, right? x and y are lists of 10,000, so when I multiply, they are multiplied pairwise like that, so I get 10,000 values of A. Then I can start answering the questions just by looking at A, that's the idea. I produce a lot of A's and I look at them. I look at them and I do summary statistics, I extract the relevant information from the A's. For instance, I simply extract the mean of A, I simply extract the standard deviation of A, I simply extract, maybe technical, but maybe you can follow me, I just count here, actually, how often, how often is the area more than 0.1 away from 6? That's actually what I count here. I take the difference between 6 and the area, I take the absolute value, and I count how often am I above 0.1. It's very easy to, it's just counting. I mean, you need a few other things to be able to do the counting in R, but I hope you can follow the idea. And then, of course, you would have to think about how to do it in, in R. I'm showing you, I'm sharing with you how to actually do these simple steps in, in R. And here are the results. Why don't we go to R to actually do it instead of just saying it? Look at here, I actually increased. Let's just stick to 10,000. Okay. Lengths, widths, A, we could just do a histogram. Here are the A's. That's where I'm going to extract all my information. 10,000 A's. What is the mean of A? Seems to be 6, around 6. What is the standard deviation of A? It's around 0.5. What is this odd probability of being a more than 0.1 square meter away, that's a pretty large probability that happens in 84% of the time. Now, if I'm worried about the uncertainty here, and uh, you maybe should, I mean, that's, that's the challenge of the simulation, since what if I do it again? Let's do it again. Duk, 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 duk. Now the mean is not exactly the same as before. It's slightly different, right? And the standard deviation is slightly different from before. And also, this probability is now a bit above 84% before it was a bit below 84%. So there is an uncertainty issue when we do simulation. Well, this is the way to investigate it. If you are worried about it, just do it again. And of course, you could uh, systemize that if you want. I'm not going to take that step in this course. You could put it into a loop and then do a lot of time. And then you, you have some information about the uncertainty. You could also just, hey, I'm a bit. You, you try it a couple of times to see what is the uncertainty, and then you add a couple of zeros on the k, and then, hey, why don't I just do it a million instead of uh, 10,000? Let's see, can it do it a million times? 
it didn't take many picoseconds to do it a million times here. Um, so why not do it a million times? And, and what if I do it again now with this size of k? Well, I'm pretty sure that to two decimal points, 0.84 is the correct answer now. It's not even uncertain anymore. You can actually be certain up to a certain level of precision, actually. This was the idea of this was the idea of simulation as a tool for learning things about a complicated random system. Before the break, 